Uh, Terry Bell here, the Chairman of EU Property Solutions, and we're bringing to you today a webinar um, in respect of interest-only mortgages. We're ready to kick off uh, in about a minute or two, so uh, happy Thursday to you. Just wait for a few more people to join in here. We've got quite a bit of interest in this subject, and uh, it's a very niche subject, becoming more relevant. What we're going to do in terms of this webinar, we're going to go through a bit of detail here and give people a bit of context. Going to give quite a few examples, not in a show off way, but it, making sure that people um, see see what's going on here. I think the, 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 the more examples of our work and the successes we've achieved for clients, I think the better for understanding where we are. So we're EU Property Solutions. Um, we're uh, uh, part of a group here, something we can refer to a little bit later. And as a group, we have at any one point over 350 clients. Um, so we work on the basis we're big enough, but small enough to, to care sort of thing. So that's a little bit about us. I'm going to do, there's going to be a little bit about us in the middle of the video, uh, sorry, the, the webinar here, and uh, we'll get going. Okay. So today we're talking about interest only mortgages, particularly in Spain, but in a lot of places across Europe. And one that brought it to a head was there was literally a tenfold increase in the requirement for the monthly payments. It's a case we're just going to hit on in a minute and give you a bit more detail. But a lot of mortgages were sold on the basis that um, the, there was a situation where you've got the interest only to start with, and very often there were guaranteed yields and daddy, daddy, da promises are plenty that never materialised. So now we're looking at the whole subject, if you like. We're going to give you a bit of an insight how we how we attack things um, and with a little bit about what we I'm not sure if it's politically correct but a bit of a gypsy's curse on it as well to say be careful how you broach the subject particularly with the bank before we kick off um everybody's going to get a copy of this book that we've recently written 2000 uh, property nightmare 2006 and all that and there's a summary of all the subjects that we cover and these are very often the uh, the, the things we get involved in. So we do quite a bit in Cyprus with Swiss franc mortgages. We're talking obviously today about interest only mortgages. We deal day in, day out with, with banks and the like. Uh, we've got the, the uh, situation with Brexit, which is undoubtedly having an effect. We have a number of contacts, obviously, particularly across Spain and Cyprus, and that's causing them a lot of problems. One big thing we'll bring to everybody's attention, a loan sales, we refer to the dangers there. At the minute, within reason, with our legal team, we have the banks gripped. But when it comes to loan sales, you very often they, the loans go across to what are effectively known as vulture funds, and they're a different animal completely. And uh, beware of that, those situations. And they're becoming more and more prevalent. I think there was an instance last week, not last week, last month, when Sabadell sold a performing loan book. I, everything was up to speed and good, but they still sold it on. So be careful of that backdrop. Anyway, the, the book's there. I don't think it's too hard to read. It's hitting quite a few uh, quite a few pointers for people. So it's there if you want to read it. You're welcome. But uh, that's on its way to you any which way. So this is what we're going to go through here. So we're going to just give you this example. I was talking about the tenfold increase first because that brings in, starts to give you a bit of a taste of what we do and also what can be done. There's the bit of about the backdrop, and undoubtedly you were missold, but you'll not win that argument or that war. Where we are now, in terms of what's going on, then typically I'm a gentleman of a certain age, so I can talk quite openly about the demographic that, we, that are uh, involved here. The bank, because we know it's particularly one bank in Spain that caused a lot of these, or sold a lot of these interest only mortgages, but there are other banks. A bit about us, not sales, if I want to give you a bit of, if you want comfort as to who and what we are. If it, some people try to do direct approaches, respectfully, we suggest don't. We'll go through why we should do that. A little bit then more on how we attack the problem, what our angle is. Um, and again, that part legal, part commercial, part bullying, if you like, the banks, whatever it takes to make sure we get our clients to the situation they need to be. And then we've got three, same same theme, interest only to repayment, but slightly different themes in each one. So we're going to go through those. The bullet point examples, you don't give you once upon a time so stay with us and then we just finish up with a here's us if you want to talk to us we're willing to to help and talk so that's us so that's what we're going to get so we'll crack on with this first one which again gave us the title for the webinar plus um it's what brought it back into mind because we're on the 15 year cycle on, on this next batch of interest only going to repayment so we're off again 
So the situation was uh, we, issued, we sent a book out and this gentleman got the book and slightly mixing up the profile here, hit the last point in here, he read the section in terms of interest and he said, that's me, it ticked every box, which is quite, quite uh, pleasing to hear. At least we knew we were, we were on pitch with the book. This, this, is the, this is the highest one we've seen, right? So he was paying 225 uh, interest only. That was going to 2,378 euros for a man, I think he's about 68 years of age, retired. Okay. So, so that's, 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 that's the huge one. That's the trigger, if you like. Very often people, quite rightly, are trying to do the right thing, meeting their dues and obligations. They go forward. Uh, he was in negative equity. He was hoping that he'd live his day himself to an even position ultimately and then doesn't leave a problem behind when, when he passes away so but a meteoric rise like that by over 2,000 euro on a place he doesn't really want becomes an issue so he had a negative active position he's down in the Costa del Sol there he had a negative active position as well of 105,000 but again his words not ours the yearly cost for the holiday home he doesn't want is going to be 35,000 euro per year to see it right the way through. So uh, then uh, very often when we get clients coming forward, again, because of the demographic, uh, I think it's the most way of saying older folk, um, it, we were asked if there was a provision for in the will, and there wasn't. Had it been discussed with the family, no, it's a little bit. Sometimes people made one mistake, and we don't judge anybody. But if they made one mistake back in the day, they bought a property, it's never come back in value after the crash. And it's almost like they treat it like the mad aunt. It's don't mention about it, don't mention about that. So he's not done that. And he said, right, I've got to address it. I'm not carrying on like this. And I would pay my due, but I'm not paying 35 grand a year for just for the, the 35,000 euro just to hold something I don't really want. So he's taken some of that. And we, we're on, on with that case. So... A little bit of backdrop, not to patronise people or to labour on your pain, as I say, one problem, right? We get that. So 2006 and all that is, is the uh, is a bit of the tone of the book. And obviously it was the days of the madness, crazy prices, crazy availability of mortgage credit. That was even in the UK and Ireland, not just out in foreign climes. Um, and we, it just went on. We all know that, right? The music stopped. Never have we seen such a catastrophic sort of uh, collapse in property prices, especially um, in um, in Spain there and Cyprus and various other places around Europe. We, we've dealt with all across Europe. So again, a lot of people have taken the view right. I made the I made the, took the decision. I made the mistake. I've done very well in the UK. I've built my pension up, paid my mortgage off, and everything else. But you've still got this this issue in uh, in the foreign clients now. The mortgages of the time were crazy in every sense. Today, they would not have met today's standards in terms of a mortgage offer. It just wouldn't have happened. The valuation and all the skullduggery that went on with brokers, agents, and everything else would not have gone on. It was missold, but only by today's standards. So we get sometimes people saying, all right, if it's the last thing I do, I'm going to sue them, right? Good, be good, good, fine. If that's what you want to do, you will achieve nothing. You will not win. You will spend the rest of your life just torturing yourself on the problem. You will not win a foreign case like that in, and I've said there, uh, Spain or Cyprus. We, we know how the situation works. We have great legal teams there. Sometimes we have to flip the law back on the bank and, that, and use that back against them to slow them down. It's just minefield doesn't even cover it. There's a the Johnny foreigner side, both ways. Okay, They don't trust. Uh, Spanish bank managers, etc. We met many in our time, and Cypriot ones. They don't trust you as a client. You don't trust them, and never the twain shall meet. So thus, our, our very existence, if you like, that's what we do. We 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 act for the client, but we're mediating a position, dragging the bank to the table. So that's what we're looking to do here. So here we are. So if we take on our 2006 date, and really the madness was in that period, 2005 through 2008, prior to Lim Brothers going. So we're on the 15-year anniversary, and we called it D-Day. And it's amazing, not in a good way, the number of inquiries we're getting here. They're getting through their letters uh, from now a bank that's bought the book, typically, 
because I think we named the bank here who, who, who made the whole mix of it back in the day and did all the selling, Halifax, let's put that out there. So if it was a Halifax one, Sabadell would have bought it. The system has decided that your 15 year anniversary on the interest only is up. And now they want you to go on to, as, as agreed in the, in the mortgage, on to repayment. And you can talk and argue all you like, but you, you're in a, you, there's a mortgage contract, or as they call it in Spain, an escatura. So that's the situation you find yourself there. Now, with this uh, ridiculous uplift in this example we just gave you there, I'm going to give you a couple which aren't as marked, but there's still uh, material increases here. Is the It has to be sorted. It has to be, right? I would say this anyway, but it has to be sorted. If you're just going to go through and let it fritter away or whatever, it, it does a couple of things. It eats you up. We, and we see any number of people, you know, who, who we help genuinely who are, you know, very, very emotionally affected by it. But it's not healthy. It's not healthy. So, but it, we always make a personal decision. We're not saying you must do it. We can't do that, obviously. But what we must do is we must do something about it. But the massive caveat is, and that's why I put it capitals there, has to be done in the right, right way. If you stroll into a bank and say, uh, in Cyprus or Spain and just go, I'll tell you what, I want to sort this out, okay? It won't happen. Very often clients clients have come to us and say, right, what are you going to do? This is what we're going to do. This is what it's going to cost. They go, right, well, I'm going to have a go at myself, right? There's another another slide. I use these as my script, if you like, is um, that talks about don't tell them too much. People walk in there, right, I'm a genuine person. I'm going to tell you a thing about me and we're going to sort this out. doesn't work like that. just doesn't full stop. That's why we've got the legal teams that we have in Spain, Cyprus, and they've taken some finding and they work with us and we have a certain ways of dealing in each, each country there. And as this has become more prevalent, this is becoming more and more apparent because we're coming across other legal issues which we then have to deal with. So if you're going to do it, do it in the right way. I'm going to give you an inside to it, but that's, if you like, our intellectual property. So I'm only going to go so far with it, but it'll give you, give you an insight. So... Uh, this is the here and now, right? So here we are 15 years on, signed up by a dodgy John the mortgage broker, mainly Halifax, like I did there, and who, I, like I said there in the slide in brackets, did a runner, sold their mortgage book for a, uh, book for a pound, and off they went. So that was that. So Savadel, in that instance, on that book, and we have a very good working relationship with Savadel. We, 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 when we can, we meet with them a couple of times a year particularly in the head office there in Sevilla. So at that time, the vogue was in Cyprus, it was Swiss franc mortgages, but that isn't what we're talking about here. But in Spain, it was you can rent this and you get this massive yield and there's some guaranteed yields, but everything was on interest only, so it hardly, in very most instances, it hardly hurt. 15 years without, without saying, especially back to our demographic, is a long time. Okay, changes change huge. Uh, you know, change comes so quickly in today's world. The world's a small place. Um, uh, you've got any number of reasons uh, why why it changes so quick. Not least, not always the best build quality from our Spanish friends, and it's uh, it's it's where we are now. That's what's important. That's what's changed. We've done well. Typically, clients they uh, they worked hard. They paid their mortgage off, they got their pension. So all their assets are within reason in the UK typically have flourished and they're in a good place. Apart from, and I will use the phrase again, we'll maybe use that so we don't hurt people's feelings, the mad aunt, the one mistake where we bought a place in Spain. So that's where we get to. Then we've unfortunately had the terrible uh, coronavirus or COVID-19 to get it specific and the huge, obviously, effect that's had on the world. First off, first and foremost, obviously the health, but then on the back of that economic, and then on the back of that to where our clients typically are, their 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 effect on the property values abroad. So values back in 2006 and all that were crazy. We know that we were, you know, whatever happened, we were stroked, we were done over, whatever you want to call it, robbed. But it is what it is. Since the crash, then we've seen catastrophic value uh, value uh, falls. And then that's left. And there's been a bit of recovery, but not a lot. If your property has recovered, this could still be the route for you because the property is going to sell for two, two, uh, sorry, the properties we're going to struggle to sell because of two main reasons now. 
Brexit, no matter what, that's not a political statement, Brexit, no matter what you think, has had an effect in terms of uh, Brits on a property abroad and on the market. Uh, and it, yes, some per sales are still going on, but it's really difficult. So you've got the Brexit thing, and then we've got the COVID thing, uh, which obviously is restricted all travel. It looks like we're going to lose another tourist season in Spain, which is absolutely catastrophic for their market. But within reason, you're not interested in that. It's can you sell your property? The very fact so you've, you've had a, a property out there at that price, it plummets down, it covers a bit, then you take bricks and you take COVID and it's not good. So we, we, we've done it, we, we do a little calculator here where we take the lowest market and discount again by 20%, and then you've got selling costs and everything else. So sales are nigh on impossible because nobody's, nobody's viewing, nobody will view this year. Well, I think personally, we'll all become a little bit more careful in what we're doing in terms of traveling and everything else. I think the world will, will, will shrink in terms of the travel market. So it's a difficult place. No matter what happens, we can follow a process through here that I'd suggest will be typically cheaper than actually selling the property. But that's our intellectual property and how we do it with our legal teams. But it, it's 15 years hence, the problem is now. So you, People are watching this in the main, maybe younger folk, but the elephant in the room is we're not getting younger. We're getting it back, mad aunt, wrong decision, daddy, daddy, da. No judgment call on that at all. No judgment call. The one mistake is there, it's how you deal with it. Time marches on, right? Health doesn't necessarily get better as we get older. But, you know, it's just got to be dealt with, we keep saying here. Wills, we, we had a gentleman, we did a case for there, and he was very emotional at the end of it when we got through it. And we a long story short, he had about, what did he get, about 150,000 euro negative equity and we settled it, including costs for around about 20,000 pounds. And a tough old brummy is Phil, but his family didn't know about it. There was no provision in the will. Uh, not that you need to provide, but it has to be sorted out. We've had another instance where a lady passed away. Her family didn't know she had the property, but the bank had managed to secure a judgment on her home in the UK, which took a little bit of uh, unraveling. So it's, it's, it's just something that needs to be addressed. Again, elephant in the room, the demographic, I'm 61, you may be young or old or whatever, but time marches on, we've got to make sure we've got provision. Do not leave this problem to whatever the next generation is. It must not. The key is here about when we said be careful is picking the right fight. Okay, today's bank manager had knew nothing about excuse my French the crap mortgage that Halifax would have written back in the day. In Gracia, in the Mark Bayer office, has nothing to do with Trevor, who was a dodgy snake oil salesman back in the day. No point starting in Gracia, the, the bank manager, if it was he had nothing to do. He's administering it through. I'm going to go through that a little bit is absolutely key with interest only mortgages is to recognize what the true cost is going to be through to see see this through so going back to our man that went up tenfold he looked at a thirty-five thousand euro cash drain for little or no benefit going forward so it's attacking that issue and getting anything and with due respect get over it Quite a few people said, well, we invested 100 grand to start with, it was still 50 grand down, we need to get our investment back. Ain't gonna happen, ain't gonna happen. You're, you're not gonna win a miss selling case, property prices aren't gonna come back in the immediate term, medium, very long term, cool. But when you've got the Spanish coming back in and buying the tourist spots, you know the price is where it's gonna be forever. Slightly rude, but get over it. It's, it's, it's not gonna come back, you know, it's, it's, it's not so. And sometimes it's, it's, it's a reality of hanging on to things, and trying not to let go because it might come good, it might come good. Attack the problem. Interest only puts it brilliantly into focus from our angle because it's quite an easy, easy, well, it's an easy decision. It's down to money whether you can afford to do it or not. But do it, we can. So if I was slightly harsh, rude, or I don't think it was rude, but if I offended anybody in this section, I'm sorry, but get on with it. The banks. Now, we deal with banks across Europe. So today we're on the Bulgarian bank. We're looking at a, a settlement on a property there in Crete today. Um, and um, then there's another Greek bank. So we, we, we all all day and every day, people in our, in our company here deal with the banks and they deal with our solicitors 
and they deal with the banks and everything else. We, we've just got a, a way where we double tag, tag the, tag the banks. Now, like I said there, in Croatia, I use that name there, he is a bank manager in, in uh, Marbella there. He didn't sell you it. He is annoyed as you about this. Whilst he doesn't want any debt off his desk at all costs, he wants to resolve it. The banks and the current management are in, in Spain and in Andalusia, they're the Costa del Sol, etc. They are pretty hacked up with it. They didn't sort out the legacy debt from 2008 before COVID. So they'd have had a good 10, uh, 10 to 12 years, 13 years to sort it out, but they didn't. They were slightly worried about Brexit and they're just a bit annoyed with themselves, right? So we're going to be a wee, wee bit careful. I'm not saying you go doff in the cap and sorry about this, right? But watch their attitude, right? Because back to what I was saying there, Johnny Foreigner stuff, they don't trust you, you don't trust them. We get that, right? But their attitude will be pretty, can be pretty brusque, can be pretty, pretty, pretty rude, but rude one, it is. So I would say this anyway, but you need correct representation. There are a few people out there that can do what we do, but uh, I'm not going to go on about it, but there are a few horror stories as well. We know our stuff. We've set it up. We're here. We're British. We deal with British Irish market. We deal with anybody. We have German clients. I think we, we uh, help somebody in New Zealand. So we, you know, we, we, we have an idea what we're saying. So I would say that anyway, so it's not a sale fit, right? Then we keep completely abreast of the movement in terms of the banking market and what's going on there. So at the minute, I put there, for instance, you've got the Kaiser Bank, who mopped up a lot of the uh, Cajas, the, the, the little banks there, particularly around the Alicante area. They have now merged with Bankia. Sabadell at one point were going to merge with BBVA, but that's gone by the side, right? And we keep on top of this. We keep on top, particularly on that point I raised earlier about loan sales, because that is that, that, that that's a that's a bit hot and heavy when that happens. And or any solicitors appointed in England is an example we'll give you in a minute in terms of a uh, case we dealt on that basis. But it's very important to understand that, and our legal teams and we keep an eye on everything that's going on in the banking world there. Uh, and we have our, our, our insights, our people we talk to, then we keep it 100% up so that we can relay it literally as it happens to clients that come on board or are thinking of coming on board. We can keep it up to pitch. And they change policies like they change my socks. Okay, yes, we're doing it. No, we're not doing it. From our angle, from our legal representative's angle, we're, we're in for the long haul. We've got cases that have taken three or four years. We've taken cases that have taken three months. So we're in for the long haul. We don't drop a case. We follow it right through to the end. With the banks, it's very important. If you if you do try to do it yourself, don't. If you're going all guns blazing, you've missold me. I'm going to have you. Daddy, no, no, you're getting nothing. Anyway, there will be no favours. So uh, we told a client, uh, we gave a bit of a backdrop to how we do things. They said, fine. They ran, went off, rang the bank, said, we want to do this, we want to do that. And they said, no. The client came back and said, well, he's a client now, but he came back first. And well, I rang them and they said they, they, they wouldn't do it, they don't do it. Well, what, do you think that's what we do? Just ring up once and go, all okay with that? Are we okay to go with that? Of course we don't. It's a privilege. It's, like I said, it's an intellectual property we developed over time enables us to make sure it happens over what the reason whatever time it takes so but there are no favors and uh, they're not interested current management want it all off the desk but they want their money back as i say there though a little bit negative there but i'm trying to give you a warning like i said about correct representation you decide but it can be sorted but attack the problem and the right problem not the individual across the bank. It's not their fault they don't speak English. <laughs> it's not you know you're, you're as equally to blame if you don't speak Spanish or Greek or whatever you're doing, right? So it's getting the thing there. But the problem has to be attacked. It's going to be a theme right way through. If you choose to procrastinate and leave and everything, else, it's going to cost you. But that, that's your choice. That's a personal choice. A little bit about us. Put the pictures up here of the team. As you can see, I'm by far the oldest one in amongst the team. So a little bit of grey on the thatch there, so a little bit of experience. Really young, committed team. I want to give you a little bit of insight into us as a group. So we have uh, another company called Bell & Company, uh, very imaginative name after my family. And what we do with debt strategies, when we deal with a lot of business debt and likes that. The reason I'm telling you that is the backdrop to the, the in our little group, if you like, our stable of uh, companies, 
There are 22 of us um, and we're inextricably linked with EU Property Solutions, completely different markets, completely different approach work, completely standalone brand. But between the two uh, setups, two primary setups, we have over 350 clients at any one point. Now, I'm only giving you that as a backdrop of confidence rather than look at us, we're great, we've got 350 clients because believe me, it's quite hard work with 350 grief clients in the subject is not usually the happiest. But what we would never do is get to a stage where we're too busy. So that's why we have 22 people here doing doing what they do. And genuinely, no matter what we do, sure, we do it for the money. I'm not going to ever be that silly, patronising to you, but we're genuinely here to help. If people don't come on, they don't come on. If they don't want to do it, they don't do it. They think it's too expensive, it's too expensive. But 350 clients would suggest we, we nearly know what we're doing. And in terms of this trading stuff, so I'm filming the uh, the webinar today from Belfast, which is our principal office. We have an office in Leeds, and we've got a small outpost in Spain, which is really, you know, we're picking back on a guy out there, but we use it uh, as and when, and we, we do quite a bit of groundwork out there. But we're here to help. Generally, that's what we do. We get there, and then we get paid. So that's how, how it works. So direct approaches, don't do it. Don't do it if before because. And here we go. We're going to go through here, right? So again, we had an instance here with this. This is a guy that ran off and uh, said, so he said, this is roughly what we do. He went and uh, said it verbatim to the bank and they told him to, uh, excuse the French, sort off basically. Okay, cool. So he rang up. Oh, you told me we do this, you do that. No, they don't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Okay. He made it more difficult by opening up completely. We're not saying be uh, untowards, right? But let's let's just put it. That, uh, there's a phrase I use there, right? Some some of you might not believe this, but some banks speak with full tongue. UK, no matter what they are, with any number of experiences up there. So you've got to be very careful with each other. They are looking. They are trained to deliberately trip you up. Okay. They want to know what you've got. Come into the web. Tell us all you're doing really well. That's great. You paid your mortgage. Brilliant. You've got your big under pension. Okay. They're deliberately looking to get stuff from you. Even if you are the most asset rich person with our legal teams and what we do, we can ensure your UK assets are protected. And we don't, we never get to a point in the stage where you can't pull back. We never put any client at risk. The cases have different styles, but typically if somebody comes to us, they still have the property and the mortgage that, that they simply don't want, can't afford, we can deal with those cases. And that's a really important point here. If you go to the bank, you can only make one problem, uh, one, one error, one error. We're not going to make any errors. But our job is to field the bank for you. If they start talking about the UK, we talked about well, what's that got to do with it? You know, so it's, it's, it's a very, very fine line, and you've got to be so, so careful. If you are going to guide it yourself, all good luck and everything else, don't expect any sympathy. Don't tell them, well, we we invested 100 grand, but we're still 50,000 down. There will be no sympathy. There will be no empathy. There will be no you know, very little courtesy. And like I say, you only get one go at it, and that's why there is a bit of a sales pitch. That is why you would use us. We have the contacts. We've been doing this now in Europe for about eight years. Over that time, we had, like I said, we established legal teams, we have barristers, um, we have valuers if we need to, we have accountants, anything. And we speak to the banks. It's not like we sell contractors work out. We have to keep abreast. So as when we go to Spain, for instance, we will be seeing, we know we are seeing, uh, we're seeing bank here. We recently spoke to um, Santander, which come under the guise of UCI on a Zoom call in Madrid there. And we, we're, I wouldn't say we're close, but we get on pretty well and uh, Sabadell know what we're about and we know what they're about. So we know the stuff there and it's, it costs, but it, 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 it's, it's less painful. So be careful if you're going to do a direct approach. In fact, don't do it. Right. I, I'm not going to give you the ins and outs and everything we do here because obviously that's, as I say, we've uh, <laughs> we've kissed all the frogs, right? We've done that. We've, we've been with solicitors of garbage and we've had to unsort ourselves, had to do cases directly ourselves and takes time. But we've now developed, a, 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 like a, I keep calling it intellectual property. It's part financial, it's part legal, it's part uh, 
the right sort of bravado, right? So my, my angle is, particularly on this, is to say, right, okay, you're over there, property's over there, sort it out, we're here, right? And they don't like the cross-jurisdictional, and again, it's delivered the right way, they don't like the cross-jurisdictional threat, okay? When we speak to banks, like we say, we speak to them, words one syllable, there's no gray area. Sure, it's a little bit, hi, how are you, right, okay? Right, this is what's going to happen here. If you don't want to do it, it's up to you. Make your mind up. And we play whilst you can have the legal system against you. If they get a judgment in Spain, repossess a property in Spain, everything else, they can transfer the cases even after Brexit to the UK. So we know all of that. Flip side is we can reverse that on them and slow them down, speed them up within reason. That's our legal team's job. Our job is to create the argument here that takes it across there. And it can be anything. We can, we, we would win, but we'd say, right, that was undoubtedly the soul. You know, we're not, we're not having it. Full stop. We, uh, if it comes to a tricky case, if the bank are being particularly reticent, so even within the same banking or organisation, different area can take different attitudes. So, for instance, we had quite a bit of trouble with uh, a bank manager in the Alicante area, but. Our man that we knew in Andalusia, we, we said to him, why is he being, again, excuse my French, a bit of an ass, and uh, basically sorted that out with him. He, 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 he was a little bit disrespectful. We put him right, and that's the thing. So, again, we have to create the argument, whatever it might be, then create the fight. It, 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 this is, you know, the, the, the client, we rang them and they said no. And I'm going to go, yes, dead on. Don't worry about this 100 grand negative equity and your, your interest only mortgage going to repay. Don't worry about it. But we create the fight, ensuring there is no exposure for the client. That is so important. Everything we do here is about the exposure for our client. If a client has got nothing, it's fairly easy. You can either decide to sort it out this way or you can go bankrupt because nothing's at risk. But typically, going back to what we said about the demographic, usually our clients will work very hard and have established and attained what they have for themselves and or their family and next generation over time. And that's bloody important. So that's where it is. So what we typically do in a case, we come from one angle uh, and we play good cop, to, uh, bad cop. Our legal team bury into the contract, the mortgage contract. And most of the banks now know what, we, what we're about and know what's coming. And we're in it for the long haul. Uh, we've uh, an, an amazing amount of stamina here in our group of companies. Um, for instance, I've got a case here we we're dealing today, and it's four years in, and it's a sale of a property. With any amount of legal problems, we've got cases from uh, in the Republic of Ireland there where uh, it's been on cut for eight years. And, uh, you know, so we, we don't go away from anything, and they know that now. All banks that we deal with know that, and our legal teams insist on telling them that regularly. You know, and we play the mix of the cross jurisdiction, the legals, the financials, whatever mix suits our argument, and that's what we hit them with. And so, therefore, we're, we're establishing rapport with banks that are saying, "Okay, so what's this week's argument?" Ha ha ha! But, but it's it, we've got it. We say it doesn't matter what the argument is. We're doing it, and they're going right. We're not get every case. Yes, we will. We've a hundred percent correct. Anything we take on. No matter what our, our ethics across EU, it has we have to be sure we're going to win. We were going to retain the paid at the beginning, and then we pay up successfully at the end of what we do, which is the material part of the fee. So we know for us to get paid, if you like. So yeah, we're getting some money up front. We've got outlays and everything else. So, but the majority of our fees across our group have worked, worked on a success basis. So there's absolutely no point in us taking a case on going. We'll give it a go and see how we do, because that's not good to us from our business. So we have to perform to make sure we get paid. We have to achieve success for you to make, again, to sort of make sure we get paid. Always on the basis that we make sure the client is covered and there's no exposure. A lot of claims here, 100 percent, daddy, daddy, done. We do this, we do that. We give genuine telephone testimonials. So for so past clients who kindly. Then they're not paid, but we send them a couple of bottles of champagne a year, just by way of thanks. But they give genuine testimonials. They will tell you what they do. They, very often, they were doubting Thomas's, and they were going to come on board because we're not sure, we're not sure, we're not sure. And, of course, we get that, right? So it's a big, big leap of faith, and it sounds you know, like it's almost too good to be true. And, indeed, it is. But we haven't just come on this overnight. We've developed this over a lot of time with our links and with our ability to do this. 
I will say again, don't do it alone. Don't use an English solicitor, whatever you do. They always over talk with their powers and abilities, right? It's a very, very niche market here. There are most likely potentially for us. The market is about, we think, 250,000 people. But uh, it's but just, and there's some horror stories. I, I, I'm not I don't like to trash people, but I know there are horror stories in Spain. People who come to us, there's our fees. That's what, say it costs you 15,000 to eradicate yourself from a solution, from a situation. So they go and see a Spanish, they sell it for three grand. Pay the three grand, last they see it, literally. And it goes on, uh, on and on like that. I'm going to end with uh, three settlements so you get a little bit more context of what we do here. Uh, this one is a, is a recent settlement we got for a client. And what happened here, the reason we're bringing this one up, this shows when uh, we call it doing a runner. They did a runner, right? They said, right, okay, we're off. Um, and they assured themselves in their heads but by giving the keys back, that was the end of the situation, um, by a one-way flight and away they went. Now, not quite double, but their payments went from 700 euro a month to 1250. And that point, they said, right, no more, just throw the keys. So, um, and time, it takes time in Spain. And then clients get chased by English solicitors. It's the worst surprise because um, a letter will arrive typically on a Saturday. So they, they, they play that deliberately. The revenue do that, by the way, if they're chasing money, they're chasing us, they're, they're to arrive on the Saturday. And it said they owed 109,000 a euro, and the clients came on. They, oh, we don't know that. We reckon it should have been about 30, 40. They've got no idea. They left the bank, didn't even discuss it with the bank, just gave them the keys back. Then you've got the accumulated interest. Then you've got the cost to re repossess it, mark it, sell it, daddy, daddy, da. And they don't get the best price in the world. They have a duty of care, but the costs all add up. So our clients got their letter plea from these English solicitors who, again, we work with now, and they um, basically said, you owe this bank 109,000, I think it was bank here in this instance, 109,000 euro, please send, you know, basically the letter is one of those, please send check by return, here's our bank data, and all that kind of thing. Okay. So in the UK, they were asset rich, they had their own home, uh, decent enough business, and I think they had, yeah, they did, they had two buy-to-let properties. So they were, they were considerably in equity. We, we, we got into this, the solicitor, created these other arguments, that was what went on, to and fro a wee bit. If it's from an English firm, we deal with it direct in, in our Belfast and Leeds office, and eventually, long story short, including costs, we settled 109,000 euros, I say, call that 95,000, whatever it is, Sterling for 25,000. Now, that is excellent value, but we usually get it for less. But we, when we come from an angle where there's actually uh, a crystallized debt, i.e., it's been realized and that's what's owed, and there's little or no argument despite this, this client protestations, that's a bloody good settlement. A bloody good settlement because they were absolutely, if, the, if we hadn't controlled the English solicitors, then they would have gone on with that. Uh, the cost would have gone through the roof here in, in, in terms of uh, England. Uh, so you would figure 90,000 sterling, 95,000 sterling could easily have been 120,000 sterling by the time it got to it. The legal system in England recognizing the, rec would have recognized the debt from Spain, bank to rights, the cost, solicitors, if any are watching, not very apologetic, but they can charge like a herd of rhino. So it's, it's, it, was a, it was a cracking deal, a cracking deal from where they were. The next stage would have been that the, the solicitors would have gone for a charge in the house and then we get all sorts of grief coming in. So a little bit of context there for that one. This one's quite a sad case. Uh, a gentleman of 85, uh, his wife, a partner passed away, uh, died in test state, so it left everything a little bit up in the air. Um, and it was a bit ugly, get the family involved. And sure, everyone's great when you're alive and we're the best mates, but as soon as... As soon as uh, somebody passes, uh, it was, nobody wanted to know about this lady's exposure in terms of where they were. So they had, uh, so he had that. He carried on paying. She passed away. Just wanted to, you know, keep the problem quiet, keep the problem quiet. So they had about um, figures there, about seventy-two thousand euro of negative equity. But he had like about a six-fold increase in terms of what he had to pay a month, and then that, that was too much. Suddenly, this was going to cost him sixteen thousand pounds a year 
to keep this place when you put on your management charges, your every taxes and everything else. So it's going to cost him £16,000 a year. He's age 85, for Christ's sake. So enough's enough. Uh, 72 gram negative equity. Rather cheaply, I've called, called that a classic situation in terms of uh, interest only mortgages. It got to, it's gone up sixfold, it's a thousand euro now. The journal's at a certain age and the problem had to be faced. And it was the, the interest only was the point that uh, going to repayment was what triggered it. So that is why I call it a classic case. We went through all of this, got him into a, a, a decent enough place, and it cost him £18,000, including cost, to settle it. In terms of where he was and what he wanted to do, uh, a really good deal, really good deal. And it helped sort out the... Not we we ever, ever claimed praise for this, but it helped him sort out the family issues and the will and everything else. Because it was, it was a, it wasn't seventy two grand plus. If he had it for two more years, nearly a hundred grand plus to keep the place. So quite quite it's quite quite in in its certain sad uh, circumstances and uh, goes back to the demographic again. We've got a couple of cases where we've got widows and widowers that are left holding the situation and uh, it's, it's, it's good to get achievements. Genuinely good to get achievements when you get to that situation. It's not yet about the money, cool, we will not pay, but it's great to help people when they're in a, in a tricky spot. Last one I'm going to leave you with was a uh, situation that these, pro these people, we, we use the image there, it wasn't quite like that, but they hated this place. For some reason, they said, and they kept beating themselves up. We bought it, we made a mistake. We beat it, we bought it, we made a mistake. Right? Using my phrase, get out over it, we made a mistake. We're not judging, nobody cares, right? It's just trying to get there. So they were they, they were given a, a guaranteed yield that never materialized. Uh, and uh, they got a tenant in there, a Spanish lad who was a nuisance. So um, our solicitor, so we, we came on record, started dealing with the bank. Our solicitor served papers on the tenant, took a bit of getting out, but eventually had to go through court and threatened uh, commercially uh, that he'd pick up all the cost. I mean, anyway, I think they gave a couple of quid, got rid of it. Again, the payment sort of went up a, but nearly threefold here. And it was going to be 50, it cost them now, going from the interest only to the repayment, the property was going to cost them. 15,000 euro and I'm laughing there because I said what do you reckon on the value of the property so we do our research clients very often are reticent to admit that it's you know negative acting quite bad so I said we said right we've done a bit of research here we think on this golf resort a golf is a golf resort it's more like a nature reserve he uh, said we found out one of about seventy thousand pounds like for like property on the market now he said, I doubt it was worth 70 quid. They just didn't want it. It just made them annoyed every time they thought about it. Within five months, in this instance, we got this sorted for 16,000, uh, including costs. So that's typically the work we do. And again, it, be, it, was, it was great to see. They were so, uh, we don't want them pleased off, uh, you know, yeah, we want to be, it's nice to be thanked and paid, but it was so nice. They, you, you'd never seen such hatred for ownership of a property. It was nuts. So that, that's the sort of stuff we're doing here. And I say it's the it's the interest only switch the repayment that's triggering these things. And again, you know, again, we 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 can't ignore the demographic. We are and what we are in certain stages of life. And it's just a case of taking control of the situation. That's what it's all about. And so um, I think there's going to be another sample copy of the book thrown out to you so you'll get that. That's us. Um, not trying to sell you a thing, but I'm trying to sell you something. But it's what we do and it's what we're good at. So it's a particular niche. A couple of other guys are trying it and just making hard work of it. That's not to spook you away from them. There aren't many people out there to looking for it. And I, I, I can give you that backdrop. It's quite hard, hard for us to market on Google because there's very little competition on it. So it's just to say that's who and what we are. So there's our telephone number. The guys are here to help. If you ring one of our uh, uh, technical business unit guys, I'll pick the phone up, talk, away, talk you through it. It's a relatively quick fact find, but you do need the detail. And if you want to do, if you're, if you're, if you're shy, email us. I think there's a live chat on there, however that works. And there's the, there's the website that says, you know, a bit like a coffee table magazine, but it's there. And it's got it's actually got a section on it now about interest only mortgages. Uh, and the book is there. Um, and 
you're not alone. You're not alone. It's not not just you. You're the, you're, you're, if you've got this situation, it's not just you. We're we're here to help. If you want us, just give us a shout, um, and hopefully it's been slightly informative, not in a negative way. We're not being negative and saying that. the great thing is if you can attack it, you've got to make it back into a positive. That's that's how I live my life. So that's us. Thanks for watching, uh, and catch you again soon. Thank you. Bye.